Hi, this is Shay with Trucks of Sales here today doing another troubleshooting video. Today we're going to be talking about the number two problem and fix that we've come across in our mechanic shop on these DPF filter systems. So if you haven't watched our number one video, definitely go check that out for the number one problem and in our opinion. And this is the number two problem in our opinion. Obviously different mechanics have different opinions. And uh, this is our opinion and what we've seen in our mechanic shop of 10 years of repairing these filter systems. Um, and we're also plan on doing a uh, third video with the number three problem. And then our fourth video is going to be just a complete maintenance um, video on the DPF filter system. And then we might even do a second one jumping under the hood and dealing with some of the emissions um, devices under the hood and do a maintenance video on that stuff as well. So definitely stay tuned for that. Um, but if you want to take a look at this filter system here, the number two problem is the inlet outlet knock sensor. So I got a brand new one here and I have a used uh, crusty one here. Um, and sometimes these things don't necessarily need to look crusty in order to uh, be bad. But if they're looking crusty like this one, it's starting to separate all that stuff, it's definitely time to replace it. And of course, again, these um, sensors here can be found online for about $100, brand new. Or you can go to your local parts store or dealership and pay $350 to sometimes even $550 um, with these sensors. So getting it at that lower price makes it reasonable to uh, replace uh, preemptively here, I would say I would replace this every other year. If you're running your truck a lot, uh, you could probably go three years or something like that, but that's about the maximum for these sensors. Um, as you can see, these sensors are really close to all the heat that is being generated from this particulate filter. So especially during regeneration, as you know, these things get super hot even dust, anything on there, all that stuff is cooking off and smoking. And you can see the mounting position of these sensors are really close to the heat. So it is possible even to make your own custom mount and just get this thing away from the heat. And as you see on this one, the shroud um, is back a little bit from the wires. Again, that's just going to allow some heat in there and wear this thing out prematurely. So even on these newer trucks, 2022, 2023, um, we've already had to replace some of these uh, inlet outlet knock sensors. So some of them last a long time and some of them go bad early. I don't know if there's a particular way or a particular brand that's better um, than another brand, but if you're getting these low cost ones and replacing them every other year, it's definitely gonna cut down on your visits to the mechanic shop. If you see on this Freightliner DPF system, it's fairly easy to replace. Um, sometimes these things get a little rusty and they might be harder to get out of there, but you spray a little um, liquid wrench or something like that on there. That makes it easy to pull the sensor out of the uh, socket there. But most of the time, these are about a half hour job to replace them on most of these emission systems. If you see here on this Peterbilt, they're also uh, reasonable to access on the newer trucks, the 2018 and newer. Um, there's just a bunch more room. All these sensors are really easy to replace on there. I would say this is even easier than replacing the doser injector that we covered in our first video. And if you take a look at this Freightliner, they have the sensors tucked away in this little oven here, but you can move them and put a mounting plate on the side of this filter system just to get them away from the heat a little bit. And hopefully they'll last a little bit longer like that. So this particular DPF system actually had the exhaust clamp break. As you can see, this thing just got super crusty. A lot of times the metal gets more crusty on these because the heat burns off all the paint. And then there's nothing protecting the metal from rusting. So these bands are definitely something you wanna keep an eye on. If your band somehow looks like this, just replace it. Um, these bands aren't that much money. And um, taking your truck to a mechanic shop when it's not an emergency, typically you're gonna get a better price and then you can schedule it. You're already there getting an oil change done. Hey, go ahead and replace my you know, crusty 
filter bands uh, as well. So this is definitely another problem here that uh, we see on a lot of these. And this one actually broke, hot exhaust gases came out and it melted some of the wires on the emission system. And that caused a bunch of codes to go off and here we are pulling the whole thing out and getting it done. All right, so hopefully this video is gonna help keep you guys on the road and out of the mechanic shop. Definitely stay tuned for the third video we got coming up. Also some important information on these emission systems. As you know, uh, a lot of these newer trucks, these emission systems have really complicated them and they require maintenance. You know, if you're the type of person who just drives till your engine light comes on, you're gonna be paying a bunch more money. Definitely doing the maintenance is something that just has to be done on these trucks. That's why, you know, a new truck is 200,000 plus dollars right now and a used truck could even be 20, 30, 40, 50,000. That's because of the maintenance that that older truck is going to be is going to require. So, doing the maintenance is definitely a must on all of these trucks and stay tuned for our videos. We're going to help all you guys get that done. Thanks for watching and see you next time.